second of the night, 8.03, Dowd and Mason with the assist, 8.03 into the second session. But then his game and maybe his season is over. Are coming together with Sajak. Of course, the two of them clashed in Brayhead a few weeks ago when Doucette went in on Sajak. The two of them went toe-to-toe -to -toe and the linesman in restraining Doucette caused him a bit of an injury. It looks like he's going to miss the rest of the season. So that was 3-2 at that stage into the third period. McPherson gets to the bout of fisticuffs. It takes some time to get going. This time, Jernick, who seems to fight every week, is going with Keith. Keith gets some rights to start the fight off. Jernick starts to come back. They get a bit tangled on the boards, and Jernick tries to get his hands free. Then they start doing a bit of rocking and to and fro, and then Jernick does get the arm free and starts to go with his right. One or two good ones there. Then back comes some more rights with Keith and Jernick with his rights as well. Jernick starts to go with his left. Keith comes over the top, and this one is nearly over. The linesmen step in. Two tough men going. Some naughty punches there from Keith just as his back is turned. Jernick then seems to give him a bit of a slap. Keith then plays up to the Sky Dome crowd. Jernick then wants more words with Keith. That's an entertaining fight, and they certainly went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So 2-0. deadline day a fifth goal of the season things got a bit nasty here there's a big hit on the boards Petrina to go two plus ten for checking from behind so he was to sit for 12 minutes then there was a bit more going on Aaron Clark was incensed by what he saw he was trying to get through to Petrina there Sladuck involved as well but the linesman Gordon Peary and Reb Karen well they get involved <laughs> finished the year off in Grand Rapids that year and I had kind of verbally agreed to a contract there to go back there for the following year which is the year that I ended up here. Uh, the GM there
Euro legend Yari Curry dropping the puck to the delight of everyone in the arena. A fight in the first period. New boy for Nottingham, Jason Beckett, number four, against, well, you know him well now, Adam Keefe, 47 for the Giants. This one was a clear win for Keefe. In fact, the linesman breaking it up, the jersey of Beckett going over his head. Keith, well, he was enjoying it. He was like the pantomime villain playing to the Nottingham crowd all weekend. He was to be another goal scored, but there was really plenty more action. Stewart roughing on Legui, Legui slashing on Stewart. Bit of a line change. And all of a sudden, Stewart finds Big Tom. Big Tom in happy. And the two boys go toe to toe. There wasn't a single person sitting down at this point. The arena was on the edge of its seat. It was standing on the tip of its toes. Sestito with that Gordie Howe hat trick. A goal, an assist, and a fight. Big bombs. How tight is that tin sh chin strap on Stuart's helmet? Throws a couple of rights, but they're not doing any damage at all, are they? And then bang with a big left, it's all over, folks. The Steelers have a new hero. Over 60 replicas sold that night. Poor old Stuart. Oh, he goes. He stuck in well. Sundays couldn't be better, could it? Opening face-off. We have a fight. Who is it? It's Keith. It's Olsen. Three seconds. The clock stops, and they go at it. In the white is Keith. In the blue is Olsen getting their hands free, getting their shoulder pads free and everything. And they're now grappling. Olsen goes with the takedown. Keith goes round on top and the linesmen step in. Both of them waving to the crowd. Bit of pantomime villain going on once more from both players. So that was a great start to the game. To game. Now we see another fight. Keith against Olsen. It is there again. Round two for them. This one's pretty decent as well. Some rights from both of them. Uppercuts and undercuts from the two of them big long scrap goes on for a good while but that was Olsen's third fight so he's out of the game so three players lost thrown out Belfast momentum swings their way now again stuff is going on Sandrock is involved there you can see him getting quite feisty number of blaze players come around just to try and calm things down Olsen was there too more going on behind the net which sees Hirsch get involved he was to get a game misconduct for that one so Hirsch is the next blaze player tries to break his stick on the crossbar can't do so doesn't get that smashing effect so he leaves the ice and we're going to see backup Adam Goss have 45 minutes ice Giants they had turned things around now Mason's scoring there but then he's involved in an incident it was a check to the head there and that ended up with a three match ban for the Belfast Giants defenseman so we see some players pair off Colbert there getting to grips with Gimblet certainly a bit of excitement in the Odyssey arena and the Cardiff Devils new boy certainly making an impact on his Devils debut so that's at the stage was 2-1 and it was a one goal game so really it could have gone anywhere the player who is just laid out on the ice Chris Blight and then we have Michael Hicks explaining his decision to Doug Christensen wasn't too happy with it but he had to go did Mason and he played no further part in the game and so
will say, if he's a wreck hit to the head, it's a suspension. And right there, his, his first point of contact was to hit Matheson right in the head. And you get you, that's that's that is a no-brainer. They they have to give him a suspension. I guess Simon Kirk, and I was going to say he hadn't got an one-one scoreline, and that was the way it was at the end of two periods. But there was more action in the second period in terms of feistiness. A mid-ice hit there saw Lloyd go to ground, and then a number of players coming together. Look at this, all sorts of pushing and shoving. No real big punches in this fight, but what did happen was David Phillips was thrown out for leaving the bench. So 1-1. That was just a minute after becoming 2-1. Then Nottingham got feisty. Lapine took exception to some things that Stewart was doing. And he went to get this fight going. Five each for fighting. Andy Carson giving the instigator penalty for Guy Lapine. So 12 extra. A scuffle going on here. Yeah, actually slightly more than a scuffle. <laughs> Davy Phillips involved. Davy Phillips and Jesse Gimlet. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, well Davy Phillips has gone down and yeah. A thrilling game to bring you here. So much happened. It got very feisty to start, and no surprise when Belfast Stewart and Cardis Adam dropped the gloves. Five minute fighting major for the pair of them. They were always going to go after the feisty start. But then it was Cardiff all away. Of them going toe to toe, and then, no sooner had that one finished, we then see another fight, another name back in the Coventry lineup, back in Coventry for a few days, Brian Jernig. And he and Adam Keefe go together. Keefe obviously instigated that one, so he was to sit for longer. So two fights in quick succession in the Odyssey, and the crowd was really buzzing. Who would get the next goal, and how would that affect 19th goal of the season? The Blaze, 2-0 up in the Odyssey. And was Belfast's title chance really beginning to falter? Well, there was some spark from both sides and some bouts of fisticuffs. First of all, we see Cameron against Phillips, the 2-1. So it's a 3-1 hockey game in the first period. But this game was not without incident. Here you see Olsen on Keith on the boards. It spills over in front of the Coventry net and they start to go toe to toe, not for the first time this season. But they've forgotten to do something. Look, they pause, have a word, and the helmets come off. And then the fight intensifies. Big bombs being landed from both players. This is not the last fight of the night. They go on for a good amount of time. And that is the first scrap of the night. An entertaining one at that. And the Odyssey is alive, alive. Oh, Coventry's second goal. He goes to sit down for a couple of minutes. That's not the end of the rough and tumble because now we see a fight. It's Keith once more, this time against Coventry's Egner. This one didn't last as long, but the pair of them will sit with fighting majors. And the penalties just the arena, knowing victory would secure them the Elite League title. We had a feisty opening to the game, both sets of players getting involved. And eventually, Clark and Matheson dropped the gloves. Not renowned for their fighting. Clark used to fight in his younger days in the ISL, but nowadays he's more about scoring goals and grabbing assists rather than fighting. But he put up a good show there. He shaded that one, and that was one up for Nottingham on the fight card. But then another tussle over in the corner. It was Wilson getting involved, and it was Rycroft too. The two of them going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This one wasn't so explosive as the Clark and Matheson fight. And the linesman getting involved there to stop that one going any further. So no goals at this stage in the game, but we have that explosive opening that maybe both sides wanted. And that exciting to scoring in the first period. But surprisingly, this one got quite feisty. The Gardner Conference may well be really tight, but there's only two teams that can win the Earhart Conference, Nottingham and Belfast. So that was on the line. Here you see a cross check from Beckett. It got him thrown out of the game. And then he went toe to toe with Adam Keefe. Good fight, this. Beckett getting the early punches in. Then Keefe comes back. Really was a 
good old-fashioned hockey fight between the two of them. Shirts coming off and certainly the two of them went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a good while. Nottingham got battling going on in front of the net, then down on the boards on the right-hand side and a number of players getting involved here. Nottingham Panthers' Jordan Fox seems quite annoyed about something. Just starting to try and pair up with a few players. It was Lloyd for the Belfast Giants. Phillips is there too. A couple of punches being traded on the boards. A number of players getting involved. In the end, the penalty is being called on this situation where Wilson went to the penalty box for the Nottingham Panthers. Also Lee for the Belfast Giants. You saw Garside and Lloyd. It's Lynn getting involved here with Garside. The two of them getting involved once more. Just... <laughs> Minute 34 still remain to Brookwell. Devils in the power play five on four. This is Myers to take it back. Myers loses his footing and quickly they'll go the other way. Blight will take this on the attack. Blight across the line. He gets hit hard by Keith. And this is Keith. Keith and Conboy. Conboy up against Keith and Keith turtles. He doesn't want to know. And Conboy's going to give it to him. And he'll get up. Let's get involved. And that's what happens. Keith comes across on Blight and it sparks it off. And you can feel it happening. And Keefe is not uh, happy, but he goes down and he comes across and does the old submarine launch at Chris Blight and he throws his body like a weapon. And if you do that, now the frustrating bit for Keefe is that he was down and Conboy, he stayed back and he let it go. But Keefe in throwing his body through the air ends up on his back and you almost become a victim of your own uh, exuberance in that situation there by Keefe. And we know that uh, Keefe is tough. But when you go that extra bit, uh, that's where you find yourself in an awkward position in which to defend yourself. Two, eight seconds remaining. Block two, that is. Eight seconds on this power play. It's up in the air. Plumped in again. And uh, Keefe, here they go. Plumped in and Keefe are going to talk dirty to each other. And off they go. So a lot of grasping at the moment. And a little bit of gripping. Trying to break through. And Keith knows exactly how to do and deal with that. Plumpton is all right with it. And he finds a way just to give him the old tuck and roll. And that's the end of that one. And uh, that was really led by the chance that Keith couldn't get to that free puck. And Keith comes out of his jersey pretty quick there. And Plumpton frustrated a little bit that there wasn't more of a chance to get th through. It wasn't really the exchange physically as far as punches that you might have expected. And Plumpton's a little bit frustrated by it. He's been asking Keith to sort of just get involved properly. And Keith's gone to the dressing room now. So got involved in that bit of the physical stuff later on, protecting your teammates? Yeah, well, you just... Higgins got hit kind of dangerously there behind the net, and you just got to jump in there and help out and kind of stick up for your teammates. And, I mean, every, anyone else would have done the same thing. So. Yeah. Well, just like any other take you know uh, nine out of ten points from them this year I'm back into the physical side of things dropping the gloves with Plumpton what exactly happened there well just uh, sending a message that we're not gonna be pushed around I think uh, 
last night and you've seen them come out and, and try and push our guys around and maybe, uh, you know, intimidate guys into not playing well. Not that I think it worked, but, uh, you know, I just, I think uh, we wanted to come in and make a physical presence known early that uh, it's, it's not going to be that way tonight and, and uh, you know, going, for, going forward. Salters comes on. He's having words with Keith straight off the bat. And here we go. Keith and Salters. Salters asked him for it. Keeper oblige. Salter takes him center ice, looking for a spark for the GMB Panthers, trailing by two goals to nil. Salters ragdolls him literally and then starts throwing them. Big haymakers. Shirt comes up. Salters throws six punches and Keith goes down. As one side of the fight, as you'll see. We wanted a spark, we got a bonfire. We struggled a bit at times tonight. We, we, we made some plays we don't normally make and, and it cost us a little bit. Yeah, I thought Kevin was really brave. I mean, he, he got in there for his teammate, and, and he fought a guy who's got a bit of a reputation, Harvey, who's had a lot, you know, many more fights than him. And I thought he did pretty well for most of the fight. He got caught with a couple of lefts there at the end, but that's, you know, a bit of inexperience. And, and, um, but I thought he did really well, and, and as you said, sticking up for his player. Phillips tries uh, Higgins. Oh, that's a big hit of Kevin Phillips. That's going to be a penalty. That's going to throw the throw in, and keeps in there hammering away. Well, that did look as though it snapped Kevin Phillips' head back. It might have been high. It's, I think Kevin Phillips had his head bent. He just didn't have his head up, Kevin Nigel. You know, and... and it was Matt, Matt, I think the head came from Matt Ryan, sorry. Yeah, no, it definitely did. Yeah. It was definitely Matt Ryan. You know, Mike Hicks did not put his hand up for a penalty. Um, it did look as if it was a clean hit, but Kevin Phillips just basically had his head down. But that's, you know, if you're basically going to throw a hit like that in this league, um, and you've got Adam Keefe on the ice, you're going to have to stand up and be kind. Davies. Big hit again between my oh, own. Keith drops the gloves with Tyson Marsh. Marsh, Keith with a big right. Not happy at all with, with that. And we've got a fight here, folks. Linesmen are going to let them go. And that is Brad Plumpton, in fact. And Keith and Plumpton tie up. Adam Keith with the takedown. I'm not sure Brad Plumpton wanted too much of that, to be brutally honest with you. Keith dropped the gloves instantly. 
and it looked like Brad Pumpton wasn't too keen at all. But Adam Keith gets a takedown, and we'll see the elbow pad toss. There it is, and the helmet goes, and this crowd comes absolutely alive here at the Odyssey Arena. Under quality and under pressure. Um, you know, he, he obviously he wanted to make an impact on the game, Gareth, and he did. Like he, he's a local lad who loves the team, and, and he, he, you know, he felt that it was getting getting a little bit out of hand, and he wanted to, wanted to do something. But as did Davy Phillips, you know, in, in his his match, uh, I didn't see what happened there. I guess someone ran into the goalie, or someone went flying off, and, and Davy jumped in right away. Um, Kiefer. You know, it, the rule is if you're the third man, third man in, you're going to get kicked out. Um, I think the argument was that Keeper and the Cardiff guy went in together. You know, it looked like there was two guys going in at the same time. So how do you, how do you pick? But again, you know, we, we don't have replay here, so I didn't get a chance to see it, and, and the ref saw what he saw. Um, it was a friendly game. It was an exhibition. The result wasn't the important thing. We wanted to make sure that we got out there, got our legs and lungs going, and, and the fact that we won. Um, I'm sure everybody on our team is very competitive. Like, it's easy to say before the game, we just want to get a skate. But when you're playing, like you want to win, and it, it feels a lot better um, getting your first one under your belt again. Number 21, Pickett's great hit coming in. There's a bit of a blind side hit coming in there from Daryl Lloyd. Oh, here and we here go. Here comes Martin after him. It could be a bit of a fisty cups here, and here we go. I think there's going to be a couple of them. There's a two-on-one there. Third man in, it could be. Martin certainly looking for a blind side hit there coming in from Daryl Lloyd. My chance, sorry, not Martin. My apologies. Number 80, my chance. You know, there certainly was a bit of a hit coming in there. The referee was calling the penalty on Daryl Lloyd. And my chance certainly not happy with the hit at all. So, the spiciness is uh, getting into Vindaloo stage. We go number 15 in black, Kevin Westgarth. The big man played in the NHL last season for the Calgary Flames and has spent the better part of the last five years playing in the top league in the world. He scored his first goal as a Giant the previous evening in his very first game and he added another one tonight against the Devils. Keep your eye on the top of the screen as Westgarth lets his physical presence known and hammers Luke Piggott. He gets called for two minutes for boarding, but Tyson Marsh, captain of the Devils, drops his gloves with the NHL hardman and holds his own against one of the toughest in the game. Westgarth definitely got the better of Marsh in this one, but well done to Marshy for dropping the gloves with one of the hardest players to play the game right now. Again. Deflected the puck behind the net. Oh, Suwada coming in. I don't think he hit him there at all, but well, here we go. stepping in for Suwada. Suwada might not want to be any part of this, but he does. He jumped the gloves. Hey, Suwada, the ex-NHLer. Net Nick now, but Matt Plumpton, Brad Plumpton, sorry. This is what the Giants fans wanted to see. Sawada out there. Pumpkin food very well to get a, a few eggs in. Sawada's coming back. He's got the shirt over the head. And the fans are going nuts. They wanted to see that. Sawada's been, they don't think he was that interested to start. But he's certainly not going to let anybody like that step in and try and make him accountable. Great job by Ray Sawada. After, it, it looked like enough of him. I don't even think he got food contact on him. You know, McCluskey went into the corner. I really don't think he got full contact on at all. Touching. I don't know, get the puck bouncing all over the place. And a big check coming in. It's going to be a penalty here. And he might get what he wanted. Davy Phillips not very happy as brother getting hit. And a fight getting out here between Derek Roll and Davy Phillips. Derek Roll just throwing the, a couple of uppercuts. Davy Phillips getting the goal and a bit of a 50 50 draw there, to be honest. But I mean, that was a bad hit coming in from Derek Roll on, Davey, or sorry, on Kevin Phillips. And, uh, you know, and they race Sawada, give him a bit of verbals as well. He's not happy about that. But that just goes to show, you know, Kevin Phillips, Brick Miller, looking out for him. Kevin, Derek Roll having words on the way to the box as well. 
that might be a bit of a, bit of a spark there for, for both teams and and uh, hopefully Kevin Phillips just didn't too rocked by the, the hit coming in and the initial penalty going to Derek Roll. Be interesting to see, I would say that Davy Phillips is going to get the instigator here and probably even out back on the, the four on four hockey. But well, no, I think Derek Roll's heading to the. Uh, I think he's going to get more than the. Uh, uh, we've got a sarcastic clapper and a wave to the crowd. That says uh, game over for the night. Rooted to the spotlight trees as the puck comes in, it's a bouncing attempt. And, it, and there's tumbles taken already. It's Christian Harper. Christian Harper dropped the gloves here now. Awkward there, the helmet's gone for Tristan Harper trying to find his way in with Phillips. Both players losing items and both deliver it. Harper goes for an uppercut, but it comes in. Phillips looks to return that uppercut. Harper, his left hand over. Right hook coming in from Phillips, right again. One player now goes under. Left jab, Harper. Well, essentially going for a wrestling move here now. Harper determined to stay on his skates. And both players go down to a huge applause for both sets of players, for both sets of fans. Harper was determined not to go down there. Phillips did everything, even attempting a wrestling move. Yes, Harper was not even one for me there, Harper and David Phillips both going at it. I think the fact Harper's helmet came off quite early and that Phillips was always protected in that one. Bit of an even one for me. But that's, that's interesting, we've seen that side of Tristan Harper come out in recent weeks. That's something we've saw all too often in his time here at Brayhead Clan. That aggressive streak coming out again, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like David Phillips, a guy with great experience and great know-how of this league and how to play the game. Harper certainly went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him there. Well, Phillips went for that kind of leg drop. I've never kind of seen that kind of wrestling move before. Dump and chase there and they'll go for a line change. And that's a big hit then on the corner. No call from my kicks on that. And Jeff and Adam Keith drops the gloves. We've got a fight here, folks. It's Danny Bois and Adam Keith. And Adam Keith's feeding Danny Bois. Bois comes back to the left. And Keith lining them up again. Why a big hit there on Jeff Mason and the captain reacts. Both guys looking to get their arms free here. This is a good tussle. Keith trying with the left there, but both getting clogged up. Danny Bois is holding on to Adam Keith, and both guys aren't able to really get going. And the captain doing what he always does, standing up for his teammates here in Belfast. And with 15.36 to go, that's the first fight of the game. Big check coming in from Coca Fredder again, Calvin Elfring. Coca Fredder and Calvin Elfring going for toe to toe here behind the chance net. Calvin Elfring trying to get the, the lid off Col Colton Fredder. And then Calvin on the head off as well. And an excellent opportunity there. The fans are going mad. 31.2 seconds to go. What a play by Calvin Elfring. The initial penalty should go to Colton Fredder. Absolutely. Calvin Elfring is not someone we've never seen him drop their gloves for the Belfast Giants. And hopefully he hasn't hurt himself. He's skipped straight off there. All oh, his teammates in the bench are going nuts over this and as well. And the crowd in the far side, Calvin Elfring, a firm fan favourite here at the Odyssey Arena, a league MVP last season. And uh, not afraid to drop the gloves whenever asked. And that's what he's just done there now, 31 seconds to go. This one comes across for Kevin Phillips. Oh! And a penalty upcoming against Kevin Westgarth. And Emerson against Westgarth, they'll go at centre ice. Couple of lefts from Emerson. Westgarth with a good right, but a couple of body shots there. Emerson has lost his helmet, a left there from Westgarth and another one landed. Two big boys going at it. They'll continue to tussle, Westgarth can't get his arm free a right from Emerson. Both guys will be tiring now. Another right from Emerson. Westgarth will get his left arm around him, looking to uh, get a return. Punch in. The linesman not stepping in, they're still letting them go. He needs to get his And that's them off. done. Good job. They give each other a pat. And Riley Emerson lifting his bench. Kevin Westgarth, a tough customer, answering there. Yeah. And Riley Emerson. Doing a good job for his team, getting a bit of relief into the cup tonight. Adam Keith in there as well. I can just see Keefer, he's ticking here. He's a go, drop the gloves with 
Greg Justina, this one's been building for a while. Adam Keefe drops the gloves. I don't think Justina's wanting to get involved here with the captain of the Belfast Giants. All tied in at the minute. Keith trying to get the arms free and he gets a couple free and starts feeding Greg Justina with a couple of bombs. Justina comes back with one. And Adam Keith still working him over. And down Greg Justina goes and with 6.38 to go in this third period. Adam Keith, who let's be honest has been looking for that for a while. Finally gets it, and there goes the uh, elbow pad, and the Odyssey crowd comes alive. You know, I was just uh, more concerned about the way the, the fight ended there, and the two of them went sort of head first towards the ice, but there with an excellent shot over the top of the glove off Carson Chewback with a power play goal. 3 1, Stanline Belfast Giants, Cardiff Devils trying to step over the line. Andrew Lord takes a big hit. There's going to be a fight now. Davy Phillips and Joey Martin. Joey Martin giving as good as he can. Davy Phillips got a few rights. That's an excellent dig there by Davy Phillips to take his man down. The crowd in the Odyssey Arena are going nuts. But Joey Martin, fair play to Joey Martin for stepping in to protect his coach, player coach, Andrew Lord. Maybe looking for a contract next season. But Davy Phillips didn't let anybody down. 16 14 to go in the second period. Stanley Belfast Giants 3, Cardiff Devils 1. Good shift here from the Cardiff Devils again, keeping the chance to the outside. And and doing a great job, come collision there between Culligan and West Garth. West Garth's going to be called. No, West Garth letting Culligan, and that's, you know what, there we go now. There's somebody trying to jump into it, Hendricks. And West Garth is going to town on turtling his Hendricks there. He jumped in to protect his teammate, but I think he lost his footing, and he's probably doing the best thing to get down there. West Garth will not be happy with the initial call. It's very, very soft from, from Wilson. That's the first time in nearly 30 games that he's been in the Belfast uniform that we've seen how nasty and exactly what Kevin Westgarth is all about. It's great hustling again from Daryl Lloyd. He is it's a gotta be a penalty, has to be a penalty every time. Fantastic four check from Daryl Lloyd. He drew that penalty, absolutely superb. We've got a bit of action here. Adam Keefe drops the gloves with Josh Batch and Adam Keefe goes toe to toe. Excellent and play there by Adam Keefe. Sorry, we're talking over each other, coach. Adam Keefe is giving it to him. The right hands here. Got Josh Bash stepping up. And this crowd is going absolutely nuts. You've even got the CEO of the Odyssey Trust sitting beside us trying to throw the punches. Excellent stand up for his teammate once again is the captain, Adam Keefe. The penalty's going to go for the initial one to, to uh, Josh Bash, who throws his elbow pad. And he's going to have to put it back on. Nickerson lets one go, rebound out in front, Steelers though, do a pretty decent job and there's a bit of pushing and shoving, everybody involved, Nickerson steps in, Ian Fitzgerald get together, are they going to be dancing tonight, they continue to talk, there we go, gloves are off, at least one glove is off, ok two gloves off, the referee step back and we've got a major league heavyweight tilt, Big bombs by Nickerson, these drops, absolutely hammered. He landed a big one on Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald got one back. Look at this, two big shots by Nickerson, catches him with the uppercut there. And then Fitzgerald throws a short jab. There you go, right behind the ear. Two very, very big boys. Steelers will send this one in. It's cleared away by Benedict. Oh, one by Lloyd. Good. Puck dumped in. Keith battling with no ball, and the gloves have come off. Adam Keith just mugging he Kevin Noble. Did. You know why the Lion Judge is uh, lying all over Noble? Keith is the uh, agitator, the starter. Wilson, Wilson tries to tip that into the corner, picked up by Demaray, comes around the top of the circle, throws it towards Tyler Plant, and that's an easy enough save there from Tyler Plant, Fitzgerald, and Adam Keith. two 
Big bodies. Fitzgerald, Adam Keefe. Adam Keefe not going to stand for any hassle being given in to James Damaray. Coming together and uh, both of them hit the ice. A couple of big bombs thrown there, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's a couple of times tonight that uh, Desmarais has been getting you know, bumped around by the, uh, the Steelers D-man there. Adam Keefe stepping in there, letting me know that uh, he's not going to stand for that. He's giving away a few inches in, in uh, height to Zach Fitzgerald, but that's why he's the leader. That's why he's the captain of the Stenline Belfast Giants. And in the 250th appearance for the men in teal. Yeah, it didn't look like Fitzgerald uh, was, was really that interested in, in having a fight there, whether it was you know, the timing of it in the game or, or not. He, he uh, you know... Might be an instigator penalty. Manages to hold on to it, a wonderful seeing pass to Pitt. Pitt, lovely bit of skill, the backhanded pass. And well, the goals come off the Murrays yet again. And that was a bit weak here now. And it's a little chase here from Goods. Britain holds him back. Well, he wasn't happy with that, the Giant. He was chasing Marcus Gotts over up the corner against the board. Britain stepped in to block it out. I couldn't quite see from this range. I think it was the battle was of the, the Shields are. It was the Battle of the Swedes. I think it was Johan Edgepalm that was chasing after Marcus Goats after that. Once again, the officials stepping in, defusing the situation at this late stage in the first period before it gets out of hand. But a, a good break from Brayhead Clan there. You have to give them credit for the way they burst forward there. Well, a really interesting chance here. We're just four seconds on the board. It's four on four. Adam Keith and Chris Britton taking a seat. For the team in a battle here happens there's Jimmy Fritch who takes a punch off Nickerson there. Well, there was some battling going on, some sticks hitting off each other. And it certainly looked like, and you can hear the reaction from the Purple Army, it certainly looked like a punch was thrown there. Toby Craig just having a word. Doesn't want any more penalties before this period's over. A second has gone here now with just two left. The Giants looking to get it clear again, and there's more battle in here. The gloves are down. Jamie French taking two hits to the head here now in the corner. I think it was Ganzak who dropped the gloves here with Jamie French. The battle came, but both. Well, Jamie French still has one glove on, actually. I think we'll both. Yeah, it was, it's Ganzak dropped the gloves there. Well, we mentioned that there, Craig. The tensions were starting to flare uh, in that first period. And, you know, people talk about these Challenge Cup games. Nothing kind of going on, and he's walking straight out there, Gonzaga. He's not happy with that attack. Yeah, happened last time as Cam Jansen finishes a body check on Matt Nickerson. As I was saying, the prologue happened last time as uh, the two exchanged. And Cam Jansen's ready to go. And it is Keith he's going to dance with. They grab each other's jerseys. Keith throwing in right handers. Cam Jansen trying to retaliate. And you, you, were, you had a feeling this was going to happen. Cam Jansen gets Keith briefly on his knees, who stands up. The two are still going at it. Plenty of gas in the tank. Both of these guys. Helmet comes off from Keith. Both have had a couple punches that connected. What about the endurance of these two athletes? Cam Jansen tried to throw an uppercut there. That was a great fight there by both guys. Cam Jansen getting the crowd fired up here. That went the distance. This one in, there's a rebound out in front. Could be a real chance, goes wide. Oh, here we go. Gloves are going to drop and we're going to see a little scrap here as Mike Forney and Ben O'Connor. They grab each other, a bit of a wrestling match in shoes and eventually Ben O'Connor gets the takedown. That one's been brewing for a little while. But they didn't like what they saw of each other then. Well, Forney can't get his gloves off here. Eventually he's kind of maybe in the fight now. And then the takedown comes. Well, Forney takes a five-minute fighting major. And Ben O'Connor takes a five-minute fighting major. Forney will step away. Forney will step back the other way. Steelers are not trying to pinch. The group gets taken out and a couple of Steelers goes tumbling. There's a man down. Nickerson wants to fight Debian. 
Stepped across there, Bien not interested at this point in the game. And a penalty coming. And a penalty coming on the Sheffield Steelers. Here we go, it's Debian and Nickerson. Two very big men. Nickerson trying to get that big right going. He tried once before. Jersey jabs from both. Debian trying to get in close. Nickerson throws a couple of big rights over the top. Debian goes down. Keeps it going though. And they've had enough. What did the referee see here? That's the question. Catches him with one big right there. Just flush across the side of the head. Maybe and then kind of loses his footing. And coming away with it is Jonathan Boxall. Use the wall, get it out. He takes a big hit, and there's going to be a penalty here. And Bruton and Adam Keith now. Look as if they're going to go. Fritz jumps in. It could be a third man in here. There's a right down in front of us here. Bruton giving as good as he gets. Adam Keith getting the better off it, not going to stand there and let Jonathan Boxall take a big hit. Boxall, have you seen Boxall get up yet? I haven't seen him getting up. Adam Keith standing up for his teammate. There's going to be an initial call here now. I wonder if Adam Keith will get the instigator, but Bruton. Is definitely going to be sitting. And should Jimmy Fritz be looking to get the third man in there? He tried to get in to stop that scrap happening. Yeah, I mean, and it's hard to say there, Simon. It, it, you know, technically there wasn't a fight. The, the, Adam Keefe uh, went after uh, the player there, and I, I don't think that uh, a, a proper fight had broken out at that time, Simon. So I'm not sure if he can get a third man in for that. Long. The ankle going down, not really happy with it. Oh, and there's a bit of a scrap here now. Here comes Debbie Ann. Not happy with Mitch Ganzak. Ganzek, Debian getting a few rights in there to start with. Ganzek down and back on his feet again. Linesmen looking to break it up and Debian still feeding them rights. The linesmen are getting in there, they need to go in fully. It can't be standing and letting one guy pummel another guy. That's just bang out of the order. Jeff Mason now is going to be a scrap. Adam Keith and Zach Fitzgerald setting things up for tomorrow night. Fitzgerald getting a couple of rights in there. Adam Keith coming back and gets the take down. I think a little bit of 50-50. Both guys wanted it. And this sets things up a little bit more for tomorrow night. At the D, D usually we try to clear those rebounds. Bounce right out to Raj, who uh, made no mistake, mistake about that one. Boris trying to fight here? Oh, no way. They're going to go? No. Well, it looks like it. Do you want to call it? I'll let you call it. You know what you're talking about. I'm so confused here. He's going to take it. Oh, my God. They're going to go. They are? What the hell, man? You can call oh, it. It's supposed to be my fight. Ah. <laughs> well, Kiefer's obviously given up a lot of size here. Boris is a big man. He made me feel small when I was squaring up with him. If he's got a broken jaw, I'm, I, I can't see him having a broken jaw right now. Oh, Kiefer... Kiefer landed a good one. Boris is hanging on. He's got. Uh, Boris is going to unload here with a power shot. He hasn't thrown one yet. He's a big boy. Yeah, here he comes. There was one. Kiefer's holding his own here against a bigger fella. A good body shot by Boris. And they fall to the ace. But I, I'm really, really surprised that. Uh, but Boris is trying to spark, spark, uh, spark his team up here. Obviously, he's got an injury. Uh, taking your helmet off to fight like that, uh, you know, you don't want to do it usually, but he's definitely trying to fire his team up after that first period. Adam Keefe did a great job there, didn't he? Yeah, he did, giving up a lot of size, and uh, Keefer's a gamer, and that's, everybody knows that, you know, not going to start trouble against us, Keefer's always game to go. I know Boris Falabek's a big unit, oh, he is. and uh, he's trying to spark his team there, but I'll tell you what, if that doesn't spark your team, you're popping, doing that for you, playing against a guy that size and there's something oh. wrong with you. I mean, that guy's a monster. I, I'm not a small person myself. Uh, when I was lining up, when I was squaring up with him earlier this season, I was like, oh man, this guy is huge. But good good fight, giving the giving the folks here something, something to cheer about again. And what a way to start off the second period with a little fisticuffs. 
nobody's knees got hurt in this either. Nice. <laughs> Counts like, oh, sorry, Craig Peacock do. Jordan Peters, he shoots. Oh, a good stop from Murphy Lauzon to the hash marks. Robinson, oh, and it came through and the Blaze couldn't finish. There's going to be some pushing and shoving in the crease. I don't think this one is done as Bruton throws a haymaker. Vandermeer throws a couple of his own. The gloves have come up between Bruton and Vandermeer. Vandermeer and Bruton exchanging punches. They kind of cuddle and tie up now. Vandermeer tries to get an arm free. He lands a good left hand on Bruton. Who I don't think he's sure if he can fight or not. He's going to throw a couple, both are exchanging punches. Vandermeer with the right, trying to get it free. Bruton, I think, just tying Vandermeer up. And I think the linesman will be quick inbound, although it carries on a little bit. Vandermeer shoots a couple into Bruton, and he'll bat him down to the ice. Bruton looked gassed, it didn't look like he had anything in him. And a good fight win from Vandermeer. One way to just show how frustrated the Coventry Blaze are after that one. Chips it forward. Boxel's gonna meet him at the end boards. And here we're gonna go, dropping the gloves, or Cam Jansen and Keith. Finally, they grab hold of their each other's jerseys, and they're gonna just exchange haymakers. Cam Jansen with a couple of lefties there, short-range punches, and now he lands a right one. Adam Keith trying to retaliate. Both of the men swinging, and an uppercut by Keith, and then goes with that roundhouse. Cam Jansen on the retaliation. Face off. This is going to happen after this as Cam Jansen still got a couple of hits left in the tank. And still going at it, those two. Like a marathon, this is. They still are. Cam Jansen still sending in those rights. Keep forth in a more defensive position as those two go in front of Murphy and they're gonna call that enough for that fight. Bam Jansen, you can see blood on his right fist. And that was some bout, wasn't it, Shane? Oh yeah, counts for sure. Heavy in the sleeve. Again, it's kept in, but stepping up there again. There's a bit of a challenge here right in front, and there's going to be a bit of a scrap. Mike Moore and Adam Keefe going at it. The crowd are on their feet. Adam Keefe feeding them a few rights. Mike Moore coming back with a, a right hand, and the helmet comes off with a big right hand there from Adam Keefe. That's what the crowd is certainly getting involved this evening. Mike Moore, again, Hershey Burst last year. Adam Keefe, the captain of the Stanline Belfast Giants. These guys are bound to be tired of us. The end of their shift, both going toe to toe. The Lions men not want to step in, and I wouldn't want to step in either. Elbow pads now coming up. Adam Keith takes him down. And that definitely has livened this crowd up this evening. And got everybody up on their feet, Johnny. Yeah, what a great, uh, great fight there for Adam Keith. Crowd going crazy for that. You can see their appreciation for the captain of Belfast Giants. Bulls are stepping in. Nelly Knight gets it back to the point and can't control it. And a collision there. And a Jim van der Meer not overly happy with Jordan Owens and Jim van der Meer. And that might be a bad <laughs> effort, a bad uh, uh, judgment there by Jordan Owens. Jim van der Meer throwing a few rights. And the helmet now is lost for Jordan Owens. Van der Meer trying to hold him it to get his arm free. Trying to tie himself up in the head. The shirt is more or less coming over the top of the head. Vandermeer hasn't got his arm going yet, but the linesman letting these guys go. Vandermeer with a couple of big rights. And he's pummeling the back of the head of Jordan Owens. Jordan Owens looks as if he's bit off more than he's can chew. And I didn't see what happened initially with the uh, coming together of the players, but Jordan Owens will certainly live the area. And he throws it around the net. Sakowski. Carlson having a chat here. Jonathan Boxall not happy with a hit on his captain Adam Keith. Jonathan Boxall didn't hesitate there to drop the gloves with Cody Carlson. 
Good to see Jonathan Boxer stepping up the plate. <laughs> Good to see Adam Keith's style of play is rubbing off on uh, the linemate, uh, Jonathan Boxer. He did a pretty good job there. Not happy with that hit on Adam Keith. Golden play in the corner. Finds White. Which tries to play Traversa in there. And he's lost possession. Rutherford on the left. Oh, and Rutherford takes a huge tumble there. Oh, there's some fight. Quinnell and Traversa are dropping the gloves in centre ice here at Dundee Stars Live. And Traversa's down very quickly indeed. Quinnell with a good effort there. And Traversa, well, he was keen to get up again. But the ref wasn't having any of it. But Quinnell gets the win on that one, no question about that. Have a look at this here, Rutherford, the hit from Traversa. Didn't look that bad to be honest. <laughs> but they dropped the gloves anyway. But Cornell was definitely the winner on that one. Here we go, centre ice. Eyeing each other up. And a shot comes straight through the defences there of Traversa from Cornell. And that's straight out of Rocky Five, I think. Oh, and there's Jonathan Boxer and I getting involved. Derek Walsh and I getting involved and yeah it doesn't look as if there's too many uh, friends out there on the ice between White and Teal. Dean Smith blowing the whistle and taking at least one to the penalty box. Nickerson and Seskon have got a hold of each other. There seems to be an awful lot of white jerseys on the ice. Seskon doesn't want to drop the gloves with him at the minute. There's one each being sent to the penalty box on here we go Matt Nickerson and Craig Seskon throwing bombs Nickerson with the right Seskon with the right coming back at him Seskon's got a hold of his shirt there Nickerson trying to get the rights going again the big man and the whole fan base are on their feet here in the SSA arena Seskon got a good grip a couple of lefts coming forward Nickerson with the right the helmet still on a couple of rib shots there from Nickerson you know the big big blows from these two big boys Nickerson again catch him. Seskon right in the side of the head with that one. This one's long from over just yet. No, oh, maybe it's not. And they're both guys are happy with everything. And his first fight of the evening, Matt Nickerson. Quite happy to stand up for his teammates once again. And an even battle with 13.33 to go in this first second period. Sorry, Johnny. With can't get everybody out, but we're ahead. Turn and go the way. Out. Colin Craig Peacock and is that Colin Shields? Oh, Jonathan Boxall. Peacock took a slash at one of the Giants. I don't know which player it was, but ex teammates here, Jonathan Boxall and Craig Peacock having goes in each other. A couple of rights being thrown. I wouldn't call them heavyweights, but Jonathan Boxall doing a great job and gets the kick behind as the arena goes mad. But, you know, you've got a, just a little pat of respect there between Peacock and, and Jonathan Boxall. But Peacock took a, a terrible, I mean, it looked like a two-hand slash to the, the face of one of the Giants. I'm not too sure which player it was. Shields pulls up, drops it off for Quinnell. Oh, he got hit high by Zajac. And there's going to be a fight between Zajac and Boxall here. Zajac will have to absorb a right hand from the Giants forward and they wrestle down to the ice. Nothing doing really in that scrap, but it looked a little high in that check from Zajac on uh, Quinnell. Yeah, it look, looks a little high. We only just catch the end of it on the replay there. We can see, you can see his elbows a little bit pointed out as well. We'll have to uh, get, look at that again on the highlights. Nice to see Jonathan Boxall there stepping straight in, yeah. um, sticking up for his teammate. A bit of work from Garside. You know, uh, the goal is going obviously by Stone Marathon. Very hit coming in there. It's going to be a Borden call. And Jim Van der Meer. Van der Meer not happy with the call. And this is going to start something. Our quad and Jim Van der Meer are trying to get out of each other. Van der Meer. Oh, our quad throwing the glove. The gloves are now come off from Jim Van der Meer. He's got it right on the screen here. He's looking to try and get his right for him. A quad throwing the left. Jim Van der Meer throwing a righty. It's right up against the glass here. And the helmet comes off and they're going to go down with a, probably a bit of a mixed struggle there. But 
Look at the camera angle there, They're just giving the boys a little bit of a pat. Letting them know that they appreciate the effort from both guys. And initial penalty is definitely going to be called on Jim Van Der Jim Van Der looks an angry man this evening. He does, and I think we, we, we saw that that all seemed to come out of the elbow. Um, he, he's thrown a... Uh, it was a big hit, I, I, I'm guessing it's a boarding call. Uh, uh, definitely get either boarding or uh, hit from well. Check. I'm not sure that it was. I think it was a big hit. I don't know that it was a, a penalty. It'll, again, oh. it'll be interesting to see it here, but uh, it's again, it's the wrong time to do it. And after Tatum is looking to try and get the play going again, Matt Toe and Canton having words there. It'll get in a little bit too close to each other, and Canton going for a change. It's getting a little bit niggly towards the end of the second period, and that looks as like if it's added on. Coming over to the third, Matt Nickerson and Klutz. Looking to have words here, and they're right, going to drop going. the gloves. Nickerson and Klotz at center ice. Klotz, just a couple of jabs there coming in from the left. And Nickerson with a big righty there. Klotz getting back into it again. Nickerson's got a good hold of him, as does Klotz. An uppercut coming in from Matt Nickerson. A couple of uppercuts from Garrett Klotz. Helmets off now for Klotz. This is a big pot from big heavyweights, and Garrett Klotz gets a couple of jabs at the back of the helmet, and he thinks he's won the dig, but that might not be it all over. It's not the way you do things, is that, and the code is, is uh, of a couple of heavyweights there, but that could be possibly round two. Yeah, you don't celebrate like that, no matter what happens, and, and especially in a fight like that, I, I don't, I don't think he won that fight. It was pretty, pretty much a draw, I think. And uh, celebrating like that, especially when you're not at home, I mean. Uh, that's, that's not what you want to do, and uh, I think that's their only tough guy in that team. And we have a couple guys who, are, who, who could throw him, so I don't think that's a smart move on their, on his part at all. Between them, we've got two goals so far. Good hit there by David Clements, taking his great British team hit. Colin Shields and David Clements not happy, and Colin Shields has dropped the gloves! Colin Shields and David Clements going toe to toe. This doesn't happen very often. Colin Shields with a couple of rights. David Clements again and David Clements looking to get their last one in there. But when you get guys like Colin Shields stepping up to the plate and showing the emotion that comes out of you in the middle of a fight, that's definitely something that this crowd is really all on their feet for, Desi. And more show showboating by the by Coventry player. Really, I don't think not very smart on his part either but uh uh he clemens gave a cheap shot to shields in the corner and that got shields mad and and then they dropped him but there's there's no there's no need for any showboating on, on their part that's that's really not smart that's kind of yeah, i don't i don't like that that's not part of that's not part of the game i'm i'm, I'm old school i've been around for a long time you don't do that kind of stuff the giants wait to take and Mustakov saves and paddles that one away. And now we do have a penalty behind the play. That was Quinnell getting involved with David Phillips. Meanwhile, oh, we've got a fight now. The gloves are dropped and the bombs are landing at center ice. We'll see if, uh, if Quinnell actually gets the extra two here for instigating this fight as well. He was the one that was, uh, you know, getting the original penalty down in front of the net. Looked like maybe for an interference call and then offered out uh, Phillips. Um, and Quinnell actually drops the gloves first, so we'll see if they if they even this out, um, or if uh, if the Belfast player gets a, another extra penalty. Three and a half minutes of this game. Oh, we're going to have some more punches. It's Vandermeer and Fretter. Fretter is landing some big right-handers as Vandermeer has got his shirt tied up, and Fretter wrestles him down. I don't think uh, Vandermeer expected Frederick to come out of the gate so quick. You can see Frederick getting his right hand free and throwing, you know, half a dozen punches here before uh, before Vandermeer can get his shirt on. He, he, he's got it tangled up and he can't do anything with his arm, and Frederick's just climbing away. There's not a lot that are being being landed, but, you know, Frederick's a strong guy, and, and once he sees that he's got the opportunity for a takedown, he gets him up against the boards, and the linesmen are in there, and then it's just a, a, a loss of balance, and down they go. as we enter the final three minutes. Storm looking for a response here. And here we go. Keith against Erhardt. 
Jersey jabs from Erhardt. Keith looking for that big right hand. Huge reach of Dallas Erhardt. Trying to get in close here and that'll do it. The Bear have the conversation. Dallas Erhardt stands tall there. Gets the hash marks, looks for a man going towards the front lunette as Matt Toe loses a foot. And front lunette there takes a slash for his troubles here. Matt Toe and having a conversation with him. And Connor Farley and Matt Toe are going to go toe to toe. We've got to keep the helmets on. And referee looking to get the helmet out of the way here. Matt Farley Toe won't take his off. He's not going to take his helmet off, but Farley eventually gets to it. And this could be a toe to toe. I'm going to let you call it giving. Farley with a right on a right. And uh, oh, not much in it, and a bit of a flawsy over there. Matt Toe coming with the overhand right. Two rights from Farley, one from Toe. And uh, Toe trying to go to his teammates and saying, Come on here, boys, we need to up the intensity here. Matt Toe offered Farley out after the incident involving Cartier or involving Clemente, where they both engaged or they both tumbled into the goaltender. And uh, Toe offering an offer in Farley. Farley, first one to drop the gloves. and. Uh, a nice effort from Matt Toad and Cage, his teammates back in the game. Well, again, it'll only time will tell, Davey. Shines. Clutch out for the Blaze. Quinnell and Clutch looking to drop the gloves, and here we go. Big Clutch and Mike Quinnell. Is that Jim Van der Meer? My apologies. Jim. It's been Jim Van der Meer throwing punches. He gets rid of the helmet now. This is a big scrap from two big bodies. Jim Van der Meer looking to try and get the helmet off for Clutch, and he catches him with a right. Couple of rights coming in from Klotz, another right from Jim van der Meer. The two linesmen really settling themselves out of the way here. A couple of big rights from big, big bodies. Van der Meer and Klotz with a couple of under uppercuts there. Van der Meer again switches from his left to his right. That's going to do it. And that's a good start. And two big combatants there for both teams. I think it's about honours even there, Johnny. Yeah, Simon, two big bodies going out early in this game. Klotz coming down the boards, Jim Vandermeer taking him out hard, and Klotz didn't like it, returning it with a slash, and it all kicked off from there. The play from Adam Keith, there's a chance to puck breaks for Klotz again there, and there's going to be a penalty in the play for interference as Klotz and Adam Keith collide, and the gloves are off. Adam Keith and guard Klotz heading back to the center ice, big right there from Klotz, but Adam Keith responds with the right, elbow pads are off now. Jabbing with the left here from Kiefer. Big right coming in from Klotz. Adam Keith giving up a few inches here to guard Klotz. But the captain going back down from anybody. The helmet's off for Klotz now. A little bit of a scramble there. Another right coming over the top from Adam Keith. An uppercut from Klotz. The linemen certainly don't want to step in here. And kind of things up. The captain at the natural cost of the helmet. And he thinks he's going down the tunnel here, but he still has time to go. And as he's going for repairs, but Adam Keith's been a few months nice since Adam Keith had a scrap in the SSA Arena. Wait for the signal here for Brian Stewart to head towards the bench, and he's getting the and trying to get in the attack. Good turnover. It takes a whack for his troubles through Zach Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, and Quinnell. Quinnell, that's going to be a penalty. Just out in the camera here, Fitzgerald. Look at the play on Matt. Oh, Adam Keith and Zach Fitzgerald are going to go throw to throw. Adam Keith with a couple of haymakers. All right, Zach Fitzgerald recovers. Keefer goes down. Slip more than anything else. And the captain standing up to him. And there's a bit of a conversation going on at the far side of the ice now. Jim Van der Neer. Adam Keith has got the crowd on his feet in the SSC Arena. But Mike Quinnell took his man out along the wall. It's a big right coming in there from. Adam Keith, he lost the helmet, did Zach Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald did well to stand up, didn't get the punch in. And Adam Keith ended up on his backside, but really good to see Adam Keith stand up for his teammates again. Absolutely. Yes. Keith is an Iron Man. I love his playing style. Basically, one of their, our players made a good check along the boards and took out one of Shepko Steeler guys. Shepko Steeler guy, bigger guy, come up to him and, and, and tried to entice him into a fight. Keith stood up for him. Brilliant, brilliant job, and that's the way it should be. Back that time from Matt Toe. Foster for the Giants in the Panthers' end. Keith looking to come out with a puck, but good defensive play once again by Brian. Brian and 
And Adam Keith here, both dropped the gloves. The whistle's going. Brian with the first right in. They're going to get the hand free. Adam Keith just got the arm free, and he's got the arm out of his sleeve this time. Captain of the Belfast Giants knows this stuff more than most. And it, Brown's got him in a headlock, but the fist is coming out. A couple more rights there from Adam Keith. Jeff and Brian holding on with dear life to lose the helmet. Adam Keith with another right. The crowd's going absolutely nuts in here this evening. Brian again with an uppercut that time. Good play by Adam Keith and with the take down. A good scratch from a couple of guys about the same size. But it's the loudest I've heard this SSC Arena in quite some time. Yeah, the crowd absolutely loves that. Adam Keith getting in there, lighting a fire for his team. Good fight by both guys there. An uncharacteristic headlock. I haven't seen that in a long time in a fight, but... Uh, I thought Adam Keith there had lost his, uh, his fight strap, which would have been a rookie error, but he just got his arm out. A little pat there in the back from Adam Keith, showing his respect. Nobody at the Chris Higgins has just been steamrolled there by Patrick Cordolo and Adam Keith and Patrick Cordolo going to tie. Cordolo throwing the first couple of rights there, but giving up a massive amount of size and weight as the captain, Adam Keith, is here right in our screens. Cordolo. Look at the size of that guy, he's just an absolute monster. Holding off the cap, he gets a right in there. A couple of rights from Portolo. And you've got to give the big man credit, a little top there from appreciation. But the captain, Adam Keith, not happy with the big hit coming in on Chris Higgins. Possible borderline charging, no call on the play. And both guys will sit for a minimum of five minutes each. Yeah, we'll take a look at it again here. The puck goes to the corner. Uh... It's a borderline charge there. A referee didn't see it that way. Um, but a solid hit nonetheless. And Adam Keefe jumps up to defend his teammate there. And give him credit, he's, uh, he's given up a few pounds on uh, a fight there with Bordelow. Well, I think you've got to give Adam Keefe a massive amount of credit there for stepping up for his teammate. But he's been doing that for so long now here, Johnny. Yeah. You know, he'll not back down from anybody. I mean, but just jumping ahead there was the Duke. And he takes his man hard to the wall. That's a great hit coming in there from the youngster. And it could be a, a bit of a scramble here. Martinelli and dropping the gloves. And Ram Martinelli getting the right in there. Not too sure who it is up against, but it's Andre Lord. Martinelli and Lord going toe to toe. Couple of rights there from Lord. It's the first time I've seen Ram Martinelli dropping the gloves. Another right from Lord. As we've got a pretty good view in this one. It's right down in front of it. And the Lions man stepping in. That's great to see for Ram Martinelli stepping up for his teammate. Yeah, uh, he's a great player for the Giants. I think he was great last night. He's logged a lot of important minutes for the Giants. Uh, done a great job killing tonight as well. And you can see him right there. The emotion stepping up for his teammate there, Leduc. He comes across to the left. Saviano has a body or two going towards the net. Gets it back. Six seconds. Shot coming in. Tipped in front. Goes wide to the target. Three to go. That looks as if it's going to be that. Well, there's going to be a penalty on the play. But that's going to do this, folks. The horn just went, just as the there's a real scramble in front here. Oh, and a real that's oh. could be nasty. A lot of bodies in front. Blair Riley, Andrew Hotham, and as all this could be side boys there. Jim Vandermeer, it's kicking off in the, in the corner. We got Andre Dixon now. The fan points a real don't want to see this at the end of the game. These two teams have still got to play each other a couple of times. Hammer, calm nerves need to prevail here, Johnny. In fairness, where was this energy at the start of the first period? Cardiff Devils get the next two points. They now seven points clear at the top of the league and the game in hand against the Stanley Belfast Giants. There will be some penalties called at the end of this game. Stefan Hogarth having a chat there with David Rutherford as they skate away. Not too sure if shaking hands at the end of this game is a good idea. Yeah, but maybe best just let these guys uh, cool off and get to the dressing rooms. It seems to have cooled off now. Both teams are uh, going to head back to their own ends. But you can see the passion both teams have. Um, the Giants and the... See the goaltender going off to see if they can get the 10 goals. <laughs> Belfast, but an incredible result for Fife tonight. Absolutely incredible. Paquette. Well, here we go, Paquette and Keith.
Paquette and Keith are going to go here. Well, I think Keith just took a second too long. Panthers, so Sarkis enters with speed. Oh, he got checked. And Brown doesn't like it whatsoever. That was an open eye set. Oh, Brian McGrattan's going for him. A lot of friction here between Vandermeer and Brian McGrattan. Oh, and fists are flying here. The gloves are off. And Brian McGrattan and Vandermeer, they're going to dance. Just throwing right handers are the two. Right in front of the Panthers bench. Whoa, what a bout. They're going at it. They've got so much adrenaline going through their veins right now. Brian McGrattan sticking up for his teammate there. And then finally he'll just bear hug him into the plexiglass. And I'll tell you what, folks, National Ice Center is buzzing right now. Brian McGrattan salutes Nottingham. Denied. Giants now putting on the pressure, trying to get the insurance marker here. Quinnell goes down. And he'll take a little cross check on Steve Lee. And then Steve Lee takes the ball. And they're going to go for it. Steve Lee and Quinnell are going to dance. Steve Lee will take him down. He'll shoot right back up though, and Lee's going to try to offer a few more right-handers there. And he wrestles him through the ice, and National Ice Center very, very much into this game right now. And Quinnell's cut too. Lee caught him good. Shout out to Michael Hoy. Oh, and there's going to be a scrap here. Quinnell. And Nick of Fork, two lightweights, middleweights, Nick of Fork feeding Quinnell a couple of rights. Quinnell coming back with it. This is a good scrap from two small guys. Real battle here. Not too sure what started that out. And both of them are quite happy with the way things go. And getting things off to a feisty start. Quinnell heading down the chains room for repairs. Yeah, you can see halfway through that scrap there, Quinnell, he, he stopped throwing punches. I think he'd hurt his hand there. You can see. I think he's already heard it and really reluctant to throw that uh, right hand after that. There's an 